Hi everybody, how are you today? So we have a lot of empty seats, August, last two weeks of August, so if anybody wants to move ahead, I'll protect you from CNN and uh, Bloomberg. You won't get in trouble for sitting in their seats, so if anybody wants to move on up. Uh, good afternoon, you're probably wondering why we are briefing on a Wednesday, why not? Uh, I thought some of you might enjoy an extra long weekend. If anyone wants to feel free to take off, tomorrow we'll certainly write you a, uh, a slip to go. Um, wanted to mention yesterday I was at the Department of Defense and saw your digs over there, or your colleagues' digs. I uh, saw your colleague Jennifer Griffin, uh, Rich, and saw some CNN folks as well. If you've not been over there, boy, that's nice. I mean, they really have a great, <laughs> a great setup over there. So. Um, your colleagues said, don't, don't tell that to our Do State Department office. colleagues. Yes, they have nice big offices. Uh, <laughs> I did not ask about rats, but it was very, very nice. And I uh, want to thank my colleague Dana White for having me over there. I don't know if they have Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, but we were actually over there talking about the uh, India 2 plus 2 meeting uh, that is coming up, which I wanted to uh, make a little announcement about that today and mentioned that Secretary Pompeo looks forward to traveling to New Delhi with Secretary Mattis for the inaugural India 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue. It takes place starting on September the 6th. They'll meet with their Indian counterparts, External Affairs Minister Swaraj and Defense Minister Sitar Aman to discuss enhancing our engagement with India on critical diplomatic and security priorities. The dialogue is an indication of the deepening strategic partnership between our two countries and India's emergence as a net security provider in the region. The importance of the U.S.-India strategic partnership is highlighted in the President's national security strategy, as well as the administration's South Asia and Indo-Pacific strategies. Uh, so we look forward to that and look forward to having some of you uh, travel along with us. Uh, next, I'd like to uh, recognize a colleague of mine who um, is moving on to his next posting and will be preparing to head to Moldova. Uh, some of you may know uh, Joe Garrity, who's worked in the European Affairs Bureau, and I just wanted to recognize Joe for truly being one of the best press officers here in the building. Uh, my first day, about 16 months ago, he helped get me prepped up to start briefing all of you, and he's really been fantastic. So I just wanted to wish him and his family well as he moves on uh, to his new post. Uh, last thing I'd like to highlight, and that is um, something we're really proud of that's taking place in Uzbekistan right now. Earlier today, our U.S. Ambassador to Uzbekistan, Pamela Spratlin, joined the Deputy Justice Minister of Uzbekistan to welcome the American Councils for International Education to Uzbekistan. That group is based here in Washington, D.C. The American Councils implements U.S. educational programs and exchanges worldwide. It will be the first U.S. government, excuse me, the first U.S. NGO uh, organization registered in Uzbekistan for more than 15 years. Uh, it demonstrates our growing strategic partnership between the United States and Uzbekistan and the government of Uzbekistan's commitment to meaningful reform and international engagement. Uh, the welcome news represents our two countries' strengthening of people-to-people -people ties, as American councils will open up many opportunities for academic and cultural exchanges between the United States and Uzbekistan. And as you may recall, we invited that country to attend our Religious Freedom Ministerial uh, here at the State Department back in July in recognition of the recent steps that the government of Uzbekistan has taken to improve religious freedom. We commend the government for the significant progress that it's made in implementing the President's reform agenda. And with that, I'd be happy to take your questions. Um, Go ahead, yeah, I'd like to ask about something that we didn't really get a chance to talk about too much yesterday. Okay. Um, Yemen and the, the UN report that was out this week on the detailed possible war crimes there. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to get your view on this report and the Secretary's view. And I was interested if this is something that you expect uh, will inform U.S. policy moving forward. Yeah. Uh, give me one second. Uh, okay. Yemen back here and it takes a bit to get to. Okay. Um, first, let me start by saying uh, that uh, Secretary Mattis and uh, Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, General uh, Chairman Dunford, addressed this uh, to a great extent yesterday in their press briefing. So I would um, just add on to their comments that they made yesterday. Uh, in terms of the UNHCR report that you ask about, we've seen that report to the Human Rights Council. Uh, the possible violations of international law as outlined in that report are very concerning to the United States government. Uh, we believe that if such crimes have taken place, that there is simply no justification for those types of crimes. We take the report seriously. Uh, we're certainly taking a look at the report and urge all parties to the conflict to do the same. 
Uh, this serves as a good reminder that all parties to the conflict need to comply with their obligations under the law of armed conflict to thoroughly investigate alleged violations of the law of armed conflict and take necessary measures to prevent uh, such violations. And that report, uh, I think, gets us back to something that we have long supported, and that is a political solution to take place in Yemen. Uh, Martin Griffiths, who represents the United Nations as its special envoy, uh, has a meeting coming up. I believe it's within the next week or so. So we're happy to, hoping to have some additional information and possibly um, possibly some progress uh, coming out of those meetings, and I'd be happy to bring you more when we do have it on that. Yeah, but do, you, uh, do you expect that this could maybe um, cause the U.S. to reevaluate support for the Saudi-led coalition? Yeah, I, I'm not going to get ahead of that. I think that uh, Secretary Mattis addressed that yesterday, and so I'll, I would just uh, urge you to go back and read his comments. Uh, Saudi Arabia is obviously a uh, strong strategic partner of the United States. Uh, and we work with Saudi Arabia on a host of issues because we have a very broad relationship uh, with that government. As we have discussed for the past several weeks, uh, they are conducting an investigation. That's something that uh, the U.S. government has encouraged them to do so, and they have accepted that, and they um, have uh, given us assurances that they will conduct that investigation fully. Okay. Uh, hey, Leslie. Yeah, I, I do have a follow-up on that one. Does that mean, um, you said you, you're reviewing um, uh, the report, does that mean that mm -hmm. aid um, or any kind of assistance could be implicated depending on whatever your finding is? Or I mean, I'm trying to find out what the you know what the end point could could mm -hmm. be on. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm not going to get ahead of any of the decisions that may or may not be uh, made in the future with regard to that. Uh, but just want to say that we take those findings seriously, and we're urging parties to the conflict to do the same thing. And then, how long will your review take, or, or you don't have a? I, a I deadline don't. I don't know that if there is a deadline on that, or how long that that will necessarily take. But I think uh, we will spend the time necessary to review it as appropriate. Okay. Okay. Hey. I have a question on the. Palestinian aid. Okay. Can you confirm reports that the decision was made to cut the whole uh, U.S. funding to the U.N. Agency for Palestinian Refugees? No, and, and yeah. we have covered this extensively here in this briefing room. Uh, that issue is the funding is still under review, and we have no announcements to make at this time. Could I follow up on the, sure. uh, the question that I asked about yesterday? Uh, th there was a report yesterday afternoon that Congress actually rejected the uh, the aid cuts, you know, the, the international aid cuts as was submitted. Does that include the, the Palestinian aid package? I'm sorry, Are you aware I, I don't of that? have any information on that. I'm just not aware of Congress's position it, well, on con that. Congressional staffers said that some it was some uh, some of this information was attributed to uh, high officials in the administration. So you cannot confirm. I'm sorry, I, I just uh, don't have any. If, if I on could that. stay with the Palestinian issue sure. for, for a minute, uh, also the an Israeli court ruled yesterday that uh, settlements that are deemed illegal by the United States on private Palestinian land, uh, which you have complained about in the past and, in fact, protested with the Israelis, that now they are legal, you know, depending on good faith. I don't know what that means. If the land was taken from Palestinians in good faith, then they can build settlements. Do you have any reaction to that? Do you plan on, you know, protesting as you have done in the past? on these particular settlements? Mm. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is that the President has made his position on settlements uh, very clear, and I'll state that position once again, and that is that the Isra Israeli government has made it clear to the U.S. government that it's, it, it tends to adopt a policy regarding settlement activity that is in line uh, with the President's overall concerns, and that the Israelis will take that into consideration, and that's something that we certainly welcome. Um, what we want to get to is a comprehensive peace deal between the Israelis and the Palestinians, and we'll keep pushing ahead for that. On the issue of, of this privately owned Palestinians, you have taken a very strong stand in the past, you know, every time it happened, that you object to this. Would you, do you plan on doing the same? Well, we, we, we have said particular? in the past okay. about uh, unrestrained settlement activity, and we have made our, uh, our position very clear with the Israeli government. We've spoken about that. They have made it clear that they intend to adopt a policy concerning settlement activity that is in line uh, with the President's concerns and that they will take that into consideration. And lastly, okay. I promised last year on this issue, uh, the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas uh, told Israeli academics yesterday that the Palestinians want an unarmed or disarmed Palestinian state. Is that a good step? Is that something that you would encourage? I'm, not, would it, would I'm sorry, Saeed. I'm just not familiar with this comment, so I wouldn't want to comment on anything that I've not seen seen myself, but thank you. Um, Hi, Lise. Hi. On Syria, yes. um, there's a report out there that a U.S. delegation 
um, met with the uh, uh, members of the Assad of the Assad regime in Damascus recently. I was told you might have something. Yeah. So uh, we we have seen that report. When I say yeah, I mean, that's a <laughs> a figure of speech. That is not a yes. Um, we've seen that report. It doesn't reflect any reality uh, that we are certainly aware of. So that that is all I have on that. We've seen that report. It doesn't reflect anything that the U.S. government is tracking at this point. Well. Are you saying that you don't know of a meeting between U.S. government officials and Assad regime? I'm officials? not aware of any meeting uh, to that effect. Okay. If we if we have anything more on that for you, I'll let you know. Um, okay. I okay. one too, yeah, if yes. you don't mind, um, yesterday you mentioned uh, you warned against um, any possible um, chemical weapons attack mm -hmm. in, uh, by the Russians mm -hmm. or the Syrian government, and then afterwards I had in my mind I was like, where did this come from? And um, do you ha is, is it that the U.S. believes that there is a, um, an offensive about to happen in Idlib? I, I think what we are concerned about is uh, not just a potential chemical weapons attack, but we're concerned about uh, the threat, any kind of escalation of violence in Idlib. Um, that would put civilians and civilian infrastructure in Idlib at risk. Uh, we have shared the concerns that we have about any potential offensive taking place. We've shared those concerns uh, with the Russian government at many levels, uh, from Secretary Pompeo to his counterpart, to uh, Chairman Dunford, also uh, to Secretary Mattis, uh, National Security Advisor Bolton, and others. So we've made our position on that very clear. Uh, in addition to that, our uh, new Syrian envoy, uh, Ambassador Jim Jeffries, has discussed that as well uh, with uh, some of his counterparts. But you, it's not that you have evidence of chemical weapons or assemb of them assembling chemical weapons. N nothing that I can, nothing I can share with you at this point. So I wouldn't want you to jump too far ahead and jump to any kind of conclusions on that. That of course is a concern of ours. We know those types of things have been used in uh, in Syria in the but past. Two, two things. Wait. Two things on that. Um, first of all, when you say that um, Ambassador Jeffrey has been discussing it with his counterparts, mm -hmm. do you mean his Russian counterparts, or is he in is he um, uh, empowered with kind of sending message directly? I, to the no, Syrian I'm talking Russia. about I'm talking about Russia here. Ambassador okay. Jeffrey and um, Ambassador David Satterfield met earlier this week uh, with the Russian ambassador to the United States in part to raise uh, concerns about what could happen in Idlib. Okay, just, uh, and then on that, I mean, obviously, if they're kind of mentioned these warnings about what can happen, are you looking at the situation on the ground and you're, and you see some indications that there's going to be an offensive underway? We're, we're concerned about it. I mean, you've seen the, uh, you've read the Russian reports, you've uh, heard their rhetoric, and so we're concerned about what could potentially well, happen. It's not just rhetoric. I mean, aren't there indications that the Syrians are moving some equipment yeah, I, around? I can't, I can't comment on that in particular. That would be more of an intelligence matter or a Department of Defense matter, but we've seen the reports about that, and of course we're concerned, uh, concerned about the potential impact on civilians and also infrastructure as well when you in a country that has been through so much. When you say that Ambassador Jeffrey talked to his, and Ambassador mm -hmm. Satterfield talked to their Russian counterparts, um, was this about, in general, about an escalation in Idlib or specifically about the use of chemicals? Well, it weapons? talked about uh, the situation in Syria. They covered that uh, with a particular focus on U.S. Um, indications of an impending Syrian regime offensive. So uh, that's obviously supported by Russian forces and uh, Iranian forces, and that is something that is of concern to them so and to you us. You do say that there are indications of a mm -hmm. of an offensive. Does that mean including the use of chemical weapons? Elise, I don't have anything more for you on that. If I do, I will certainly let you know. But that is a concern of ours. We have all seen what the Syrian regime backed by the Russian uh, government has done in the past. That should not be a surprise to anyone that that would be a concern of ours once again. Heather, um, on, 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 on this, on, on this <laughs> chemical <laughs> weapons issue, the <laughs> Russian, <laughs> just, just, just a quick follow-up. Just a quick follow-up <laughs> on Elise. Okay, just briefly. Yeah. No, no, very no. briefly. The Russians are claiming that Anusra and other groups are stockpiling chemical weapons and planning an attack. So do you dismiss that? You know, that I think that's that? more false flag type reporting. We've, been we, about we've this seen for a that while. before so where they try to put it. the blame, they try yeah. to put the onus on other groups and we don't buy into that. Go ahead, Jenny. Thank you, uh, Heather uh, of North Korea. US ambassador to United Nations, Nikki Haley, mentioned that uh, North Korea is uh, threatening to nullify the denuclearization talks. What is your comment? That, that they're threatening to what? 
nullify the denuclearization. I, I, I have not read that quote from Ambassador Haley. Um, I've read most of her quotes. I don't recall having seen that one. You know, I can just say diplomacy is something that we will be pushing ahead with, and that, that has not changed. Uh, the North Korea travel ban is lifted, or is it extended? As, as far as I know, uh, that is our policy has not changed on that if and when we have uh, some change to let you know about, I'll let you know. End of this month. I, I okay. Well, then that's the end of this month. I uh, will take a look at it and see days, if, if we. I'll see if we have any updates for you on that. All right, thank Amen. You. Yeah, thanks, Heather. Uh, two questions on North Korea. First, yesterday you took a question whether Secretary Pompeo had spoken with his North Korean counterpart mm. after the cancellation of the trip. Have you gotten an answer yet? I did not ask for an answer on that. My apologies. It's okay. just slipped my mind. Uh, if you can ask that, and then maybe not I'll, I'll see what I can find out for you. Questions. You know we often don't talk about our private diplomatic conversations. If there is something I can share with you, I will. Uh, I may not be able to, however. Okay. And the second question is, um, uh, you said diplomatic efforts are ongoing as far mm -hmm. as denuclearization, but it seems the cancellation of this trip is sort of a setback. And then in the statement you read, you said that uh, America stands ready to engage when it's clear Chairman Kim stands ready to deliver on his commitments he made. Um, does that mean the U.S. is waiting to see what North Korea does, or are you guys going to do anything to try and maybe add any more pressure to get North Korea to sort of uh, deliver on their promises? I think I would say, you know, we always stand ready to engage. Um, those are some of these things are diplomatic conversations that we're not going to read out. I know it's frustrating to a lot of reporters because we're not giving you, you know, the tick tock on everything. Um, the president decided to postpone this trip because he felt like it was not the time uh, to go on this trip. And when we have something more for you on that, we'll let you know. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Go ahead. Just is, is um, Steve, Steve Began, um are there plans that he goes on his own to North Korea without Secretary Pompeo? I don't have any travel he... on um, on Steve Began to read out at this point or to announce at this point, but I know he will be traveling in the region sometime, probably within the next several weeks or so, to meet some of his counterparts in other countries. Uh, whether, or not, whether or not he ends up going to North Korea at some point, I'm not going to forecast that. We have no travel to announce. But at some point, he will be going to the region to meet, uh, to meet some of his counterparts. Okay. Uh, hold on. One regarding uh, when President Trump announced um, to cancel uh, Secretary Pompeo's trip, um, one of his tweets, he also mentioned he blamed China not putting enough pressure on North Korea. Um, I'm wondering if Secretary Pompeo has talked to his Chinese counterparts and is the United States considering any more sanctions on Chinese companies? Well, you know, we, we never forecast sanctions, uh, so that's just something I, I will not address. But I can tell you that, and we say this about many other countries around the world, that certain countries, all countries, can do more. Uh, to adhere to sanctions. We would expect China, just like other countries, to adhere to the UN Security Council resolutions that it too voted for. So we just remind folks of that, but certainly we would expect other countries to continue uh, to live up to its expe expectations with regard to imposing sanctions and uh, seeing those sanctions through. And I'm sure you have seen the report um, about a secret meeting between Japan and North Korea in Vietnam in July, um, and it, re it was reported that the United States was irritated by this meeting. I'm wondering if you have any comment on this report. Yeah, I, I can't confirm any kind of meeting of that sort. I can tell you, though, that the U.S. and Japan, just like the U.S. and South Korea, are very closely coordinated. They talk, we talk, I would say virtually every single day. Um, I've sat in on some of those meetings with the South Koreans and the Japanese, and we are all in coordination, uh, singing out of the same hymn book, uh, as some of us here in the United States uh, would certainly say, and that is something that has not changed. We still remain in close coordination on many things. Heather, on that note, there's, I don't know, a big report out from South Korea that mm -hmm. Um, Secretary Pompeo sent a letter to his South Korean counterpart kind of explaining why he didn't travel to North Korea that the time wasn't right. Yeah, I saw that report yeah. earlier. I'm not sure why that – I can't confirm that. Okay. Uh, he spoke with his South Korean counterpart. That I can confirm. Uh, we put out a readout of that call, but any supposed letter yeah. – 
I'm not familiar with that okay. in any way, shape, or form. Thanks. So just have a quick Excuse follow up on South Korea. Um, while Pompeo canceled his trip, South Korea has announced that they're going to continue with talks with North Korea. And I'm just wondering, is there concern that that could undercut U.S. Uh, North Korea um, talks, or that um, South Korea and the U.S. are out of sync on this issue? And I've moment? started to see some reporting about that, uh, claiming that there is a rift between South Korea and the United States. And I could just simply say that that notion is simply Simply overblown. There is uh, no reality to that. I was just talking about how we closely coordinate with Japan. We closely coordinate with South Korea. Uh, we couldn't have gotten to this point where uh, we have been having conversations with North Korea without the assistance of South Korea and without the assistance of Japan and without a lot of other countries for that matter. But those two key allies helped get us to that position. So while we may have minor disagreements here and there on different kinds of policy issues, all of this narrative is simply overblown. We closely coordinate and have an excellent relationship with these countries and share information um, all the time. Okay. Hey, Connor. Yes. Yeah. President Trump talked about a couple of different um, verbal agreements between him and Kim Jong-un during their meeting in Singapore. Can you say whether or not um, a, a declaration, a joint declaration to end the war was one of those agreements? I, I'm not familiar with that being a part of the um, of the overall agreement, but I, I can tell you that we believe that denuclearization has to take place before we get to um, other get to other parts, and that's been a, a part of our policy. A, a, a joint declaration. Pardon me? Including a joint declaration? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I've got to wrap it up then. Hey, two. yeah. Um, so on next week's 2 plus 2, earlier this summer, um, over 4 million in, in, um, individuals in Assam were left off the citizenship rolls. There was some controversy. There were fears about deportations. Um, will Secretary I'm sorry, Bob they were left off of what? Citizenship rolls. They were left off lists of, of citizens. Uh, in, in India? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I was wondering if Secretary Pompeo planned to raise that issue or minority rights more generally uh, in his meetings. Well, we, we talk about a whole host of things uh, with other governments. That particular issue I'm not aware of. Uh, doesn't mean that he's not aware of it. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just simply uh, not aware of that. Uh, we are going there, of course, with our Department of Defense counterparts. We'll be having some breakaway meetings of our own, as will our DOD counterparts be having their own meetings. Uh, when we have an agenda and a, a particular list of topics that I can share with you, I certainly will, but I'm just not aware of that one in particular. Thank you. Okay. Uh, last, qu last question. Let me just call on somebody who, uh, hey there, how you doing? Hi, good to you. Uh, just a quick clarification question on North Korea. Uh, you said yesterday from the president's tweet about uh, there wasn't um, quite enough progress on denuclearization. I wonder would you consider be enough progress for a trip to be justified in the future? If the last part of the question was what again? What would be considered enough progress on denuclearization for a, trust, uh, for a trip for Secretary Pompeo and Steve Bacon to be justified in North Korea? So uh, the president said we were not making sufficient progress with respect to the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. That was a the president's position, that's the yes. secretary's position, and that's uh, the position of the president's national security team. And so they made the decision to postpone that trip. I think it's one of those things that we'll, uh, we'll know it when we see it. Uh, we stand ready, we're watching closely, we stand ready uh, to have meetings and we will uh, wait and see what happens, but um, I'll let you know when we have something more for that, okay? Uh, yeah, China. and then I got to go. There was a letter today from a bipartisan group of lawmakers urging the administration to use the Global Magnitsky Act to sanction China over the crackdown uh, in Western China and mm -hmm. Xinjiang province. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys have any response to that? Is that something that you're considering? I've not seen that letter. Uh, you know, sometimes when a letter comes to uh, the State Department, reporters tend to hear about it from members of Congress faster than we do. Um, so I just can't confirm the receipt of that letter just yet, but I'll take a look and see if we have anything for you. Exactly. On it. Just broadly, on, on is that something that you would consider? I'm just not going to comment on that in general terms without having seen the letter, who it's from, what it includes. Um, it's certainly something that we would we would take a look at and, and consider. However, okay, what, Leslie, go ahead. Letter because it happened last week, but I don't think we've had a chance to raise it. Is that's the letter from Menendez and Shaheen requesting the notes of the interpreter from the uh, Helsinki summit between Trump and I don't have any updates for you on that. I know that uh, those interpreters uh, take an oath of, of privacy, and that's something that they hold very dear. It's one of the uh, ethics that they adhere to and agree to when they take on those positions. If I have anything more for you, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And have a, have a good Memorial weekend. Uh, Labor Day weekend. Yes, thank you.